Good morning, good morning. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Shay, we are doing great. Hey, Carol. All right. Yep. Ekaro, Jerry, Ekaro, Ekaro. Good morning. Good morning. Shall I feel like what? Bawuni. Happy weekend to every one of us. She did a laji. Only wrote a good evening. You good evening. Ah, good morning or good afternoon here. It's just 40 minutes after 12. Me or Dotty Wan B. I'll be all at your show. Tell you a little mocking. I do a lot. They call her good afternoon. Ekaro, Shanko, and no. Good morning. Good morning. Or son le wa ni London. Awa ye she wa ni 12. So ati wa lo son no anyway. 12 o'clock here too. Good morning. Fasasi mukini. Tell you show mukini yo. Good morning everybody as you join me. Good afternoon. Koti kwa ti mo jiso mo yimama so morning ne ma binu. You should be used to me. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are joining me from on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, Welcome. Yeah, me not to be kidding. Sorry, one of the platform. Get to Anyway, yeah, twelve, twelve fifteen a.m. I'll be p.m. p.m. Maybe you mean to say p.m. Fourteen, fourteen after four in London. Same, same, Jerry. I'll be oh. At the fashion, sometimes you don't even know the. Days of the week, you get so confused. <laughs> so I feel you, my darling sister. Eka, some good afternoon and welcome to my YouTube channel. And um, like the picture you saw now, it's 5.15, 5.17 in UK. Awawani, 12. Olong to Biloba. Um, good evening. Nina Nigeria, Kike Lomo, Mukiyin. Good afternoon, Arewa. Yeah, as the all right in Ondo or do state I be on do Nigeria na cruise country autopilot country all <laughs> wumi autopilot me. Yeah, why I decided to and uh, because um before we forget and think uh Toby's case is a forgotten issue. There are some things that we still need to make clear to us, you know, that are not really following the case from the beginning. Or oh, we think UK government just woke up one day. Because I saw a video about him giving out to some people in Nigeria. It is good to give out, don't get me wrong. But when somebody is of a questionable character, we should question some of the things they do. Um, before I go on, let's just do a recap of Toby Adeboyega and uh, his Kinoshinkwe, uh, his uh, gushi gushi lifestyle. There is this video I'm bringing on Timofe Kewu. I know you people have seen the video before. It is not a new video, but that should that will take us to the next level as we continue then there's another video i saw this morning was it this morning or yesterday morning that i saw last year in the evening okay Ovo. 
way. So be guide me. How are you? This is our Gucci Louis Vuitton Chanel. Just name it. Whatever name you want to say. With Lamborghini. Yeah, many people, you know, it's in Nigeria, people don't question things. It's in Nigeria, we celebrate riches that we don't know the source. It's in Nigeria, you will see people. Here, I saw one video. I'm going to talk on that video later. It's a TikTok video where one guy posted a video of him buying a car. A Onde Elantra, what you call Ayonda in Nigeria, Onde Elantra. That's what you could we call it on the Elantra here, on the here, not I on that. The guy bought uh on the Elantra here in Canada, in Canada, actually, not America. And he was telling Nigerians that he just bought a car. That if it was in Nigeria that he bought that kind of car, um law enforcement agency will be on his neck. I need to do a short video concerning that to correct some notion. The guy make it seems like he bought the car cash. We all know we don't buy car cash here. Nobody carries cash to the car store and buy car in abroad. So, so if you do that, you carry cash to buy car, they will start looking and following you about. So, Oyimbo was seen. Fabishola, good afternoon, my darling sister. Please, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly do. Subscription is free. I've, I've been singing this song for a long time, very soon. Sometimes I might just be on YouTube alone. Uh -huh. You know what is happening to me on Ojuiwe, on Face, Face Eye, uh, on Book Face. You know what is happening to me here. So I might take my campaign to YouTube eventually. So I keep saying it. And I'm still trying to do between the two so that at least I'm still getting across to my followers. So subscribe to my YouTube channel on YouTube. It's still the same name, Real Talk with Antia Duni. It is there. So if you in Nigeria, somebody can just wake up one day, build mansions, and nobody will bother where the money is coming from. In fact, that person will be celebrated by everybody around, but not somebody like me anyway. And it has become our norms. It has become our daily living. It has become normal thing in our country. Even if that person went to steal, even if they kill, even if they rob, even whatever they do, as long as they are rich. Timei, how are you? Oshibe Luwa. Irene Ovo, Ovo, Ovo Royinwe, Obi Gele. Did I pronounce your name well? So it has become a part of us, but in abroad, Abba, you cannot just wake up in abroad and be flaunting riches. They will come after you. Even though this um, Toby is trying to do image laundry, uh, I, I was surprised when I saw a video about him today. Uh, actually, yes, today, early in the morning before I slept around 4 a.m., that he has actually penetrated Nigeria. And I will not be surprised if he has not start um, penetrating our youth. If he has not start influencing our youth in that country. And that is where my concern is, okay? Because uh, there is this saying that Kini uh, Kontoba Bajari Ajegbe. And not only that, uh, Peer pressure can lead people to a lot of danger. That is where I am concerned because parents will have done their good job and peer pressure will push these kids, these youths, 
into what they are not supposed to do. So I saw this video. I said, ah, so this guy has really gone this far. Nino na injasha. And um, I saw the way they were trying to make him acceptable among our people. Hey, this is the we love you. 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 That video you just see was a video that um, they are trying to make people say they love to be a big boy, which is there's nothing bad. He gave money for charity. But what we are talking about is where is this money coming from? Where the government of UK what they are saying is where is this money coming from that is what uh, we love you on top of carton i'm fine benjamin hey, hey, hey. benjamin i'm going to block you on my page don't come and do this on my page okay i never promise you motto i don't have money for any motto and I'm going to not going to raise money for any motto. You have seen that I've not answered your your this thing for a long time. What you asked me for was a wheelchair, and I bought it with my own money, and I sent it to you in Korodu. This one you've been coming and putting some um, comment on my on my post asking for motto. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't have a charity organization yet to do all these things, and I will not put pressure on the. On my followers because i um, they are following me i'm not going to do that you asked me for a wheelchair you said that was all you need to move around and i got you a wheelchair i don't like what you have been doing since then please don't get the other side of me Coming under my show when I'm talking, I'm asking me for motto. I don't like it. You've been doing that thing, and I've been trying to behave like I didn't see it. The wheelchair I gave to you, it was from my pocket. I didn't ask. People are on my page hearing me. If I ever come to them and say, I want to buy a wheelchair for anybody. Please, don't let us take it too far, please. So, like I was saying, uh, we saw these people carrying carton of indomie. May we never be hungry. Carrying cartons of indomie on their head. And not only that, um, they were being made to say, Toby Adegboyega, we love you. And also, we have seen how they are trying to sell this guy, Toby Adegboyega, to Nigerian youths. So I have somebody that has been helping me on this thing and that person got me a video yesterday to see even though i have seen the video but i we were able to cut out a part that i'm going to play for you to listen to at least for i want to get we play more more in depth about why they this guy is having problem with uk government not only that let me point out something this guy does not have a building as a church, he doesn't have a physical address. But okay, this is the church, Gogo. They rent expensive hotel, expensive centers. It's what they have been using for their shows. Oh, look back. Good afternoon, KK. How are you? But when you um Sadek. They, are, they don't have a physical church. They rent expensive centers in UK. Not only that, the target of this guy are people in places like Peckham, Croydon, and you are in UK. You, if you are in UK, 
all those um, places to get pay and less privilege policy can you please mention it for us because those are the places where it goes to peak where it goes to peak young people and the video the audio i am going to play for you uh, you will hear in koto low and what youth near fun until proving otherwise that is what it was alleged and i'm going to play the audio i won't i won't be able to put the video because of copyright but i will play it they are trying to do more um, image laundry for this guy trying to portray him as a good person trying to say he is not what he is called before you accept somebody before you believe and i was so glad when i was listening to that video exactly what i have been preaching justin thank you lusham grace brixton and hey, i'm not a you i'm not a i'm not in uk so i may not be able to talk much about the part but every one of us we are familiar of about peckham acne thank you Olushola. so that is where he pick his victims for According to what uh, Dagenham, according to what they said, they said these victims are probably youths that have been convicted of one crime or the other and are vulnerable. They said he picked, they said, I keep saying they say, but Onyibo will not come after you. The video I'm going to play for you because they were saying he doesn't have any problem with government, that uh, it's just because of tax now i'm going to play enough evidence for you that it is not because of tax it is more than that woolish grace and just be commenting so that other people that i will read that will see this video later and look at comments we understand the places and i was so glad when the parliament were talking they actually said most of the things i've been preaching most of the things I've been saying that you will say I should shut up. I am coming for God of men. Honestly, I don't know what to say to you people, especially these people that are fighting for people. Tottenham, Eshegon, please keep mentioning, keep commenting, let them see it. So that you will listen. By the time you are listening to this audio, I may pause in between just once or twice. I really want us to take our time and listen especially you people that have no have not gotten hold of this video and they bring toby to you dressed in gucci dressed in louis vuitton dressed in a very expensive clothes and shoes and he's telling you he's living on bitcoin he's living on and uh, whatever whatever back in Echegon, and you are believing and somebody is trying to tell sell him to nigerian youth before they are used for what they are not supposed to be used for. If you are listening to, if you know what the Yoruba says, that means it's the dumb that goes to jail for the smart one. Smart one, hardly go to jail. Is the dumb under them that goes to jail. If you hear they catch people, at airport that they carry drug most times most times when they carry people when they arrest people for drug they don't arrest hardly did they see the the um the, 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 the um, drug lord to arrest it takes time they will have arrested a lot of people under him working for them so it's the same thing this thing is a ring is a ring is a pyramid and before you know it and it's your share and it's your romanson and already some people are paying for him in uk some people are already paying for him seriously in uk before your family your children your family your children um, your friends children or your family your niece your cousin or whoever connected to you will fall into this thing and find themselves right there we all know nigeria is tough 
already Nigerian youths are vulnerable. Already Nigerian youths, they are weak. They will dance and fall for anything and everything if given the chance. The peer pressure is there. And the social media pressure is there. And the celebrity measure and pressure is there. Lots of pressures on these youths. And it's you about Faumwe, Leti Dada. It's you about Faumwe, Soro. It's you about Faumwe. There is nothing we will say justice for anybody. Because you can't get justice if you fall into what you are not supposed to fall for. That is why some of us, somebody like me, when I see things, I keep crying it out. You know why? Because if I'm in Nigeria and life is tough as a single mother, can I hold an adult child down from going out to look for what is going to eat? No, I cannot. And in the process of going around to look for what they can eat, they can meet all kinds of people and everybody and fall into any temptation the way Nigeria is today. Okay? So it is because of this kind of a thing that, look, life might be tough today. Tomorrow might be good for you. If you don't put your hand in what you are not supposed to, you put your hand into something, at the end of the day, you find yourself into trouble, in trouble. With all the money Osh Poppy got, where is it today? Where is it? Where Osh Poppy is today? Even though some of these desperate youth will say, they don't care. Even if it's to enjoy for five years and die, they don't care. Honestly, I need to learn. I need to learn. Lack of contentment. Lack of endurance. Lack of persistency. Lack of uh, uh, whatever that you are supposed to do is what is making you make such statements. You will know there are some money that yeah, you don't have to get because you will never have peace having such money. So I'm going to play the audio and uh Ekere Madu and wife are still in London. Ah, long thing it I want you on the seven in this case in one the sevens. When sevens come, we are our hairs are on ground. We want to know how far because some people are still saying, and uh, my question about the passport they brought out about Ekere Madu is. Where did they get their passport from? Because according to UK, they say they have the custody passport and details of that board with them. So Baula won't share the passport or money config basita. So we don't know which is which years. Anyway, that is not the main issue now. Now I'm going to play one audio for you. I will have played it as a video, but because of copyright, I don't want to put it on this video. So they so they won't tell me to delete the video. So you will I will just play it and we analyze it and break it maybe once or twice in between then we move on uh or i just know don't forget to please kindly share this video on facebook um i forgot to put this show on my other page that is not restricted sometimes because i want to quickly do what i want to do and move on but please don't forget to share still share still share this video Bito by the code day we are trying our best. If you can download and reshare, that is okay. So let's go forward and listen to this audio. I was glad I, I had some of my voices, okay, in that um, video. I had what I have been saying in that video, and I laughed. So I was supposed to do something else today, but this one is more important. Yeah, before we go on, I want to put uh, so that people will know who we are talking about. Let me put the video so that when you are just joining us, you will know what we are trying to say. Emma Binu, just accept me as I am. I'm doing it as much. I'm trying to do it as best as I can. I have work and all that. So I can only do the little I can do. Okay. All right. So, because more we pay, they are really doing money laundry and only money laundry, image laundry, or in badly. Um, but people really need to know what is going on. The UK Parliament, the UK government, did not just wake up and say this place. We are. They are. They didn't shut any building down. It's just their activities and already. He has 
when he knew there was problem, this video I'm playing happened two years ago. I mean, was deliberated on two years ago. When he knew the thing was going to give him serious problem, that was when he changed the name to Nixon. Is it Nixon or Nixon? Let me be sure of the name. And there was this, already they have um, change.org signing on um, change.org that they should take necessary, uh, necessary action concerning the place. Let me look for that one. So if you think by um, government, um, UK government, that is not Nigeria, will just wake up and be winchanting somebody, you need to have your oblongata, medulla oblongata check. So this is the petition against him. Abolish, abolish Spark Nation. And already it has 1,230 signatures. They need 1,005 signature. And um, one thing this guy does not know that his victims are out there. His victims, people that have experienced what he did, they are talking. So let's listen to the audio before we proceed. This evening, and I'm grateful to colleagues who have stayed late to uh, be present during this uh, this debate. Spat Nation, uh, an organisation that's been in the news recently, and I'd like to start off by expressing my gratitude to Nadine White and Emma Yule at Huff Post, who have carried out some extraordinary investigative journalism to bring them to light, and also to Greg McKenzie and the excellent BBC Panorama team for their work, as well as many others uh, working in the media and in the press. When I first became aware of SPAC Nation, I thought, as many have done, that it was just another church. I started to think differently when one of their leaders stood as the Conservative candidate in a Croydon Council by-election. Now, there's nothing wrong in a church leader standing for election, of course. What was odd was to find hundreds of young members of this so-called church shouting abuse at other parties' canvassers, shouting obscenities at the council leader, and intimidating voters on their own doorsteps, including by video recording them. When I tweeted my concerns about this unchurchlike... Can you hear what you are saying? ...inundated with emails and phone calls from... Share and walk on, sir, please. Let me know. Share and go. Eje can read comments, can leave more. Share and go. More, she stop and move more. Yes, okay, good. Thank you. So we can proceed then. I need to be sure. So, what they said initially was talking about how. Um, his members were abusing people that were, you know, the way they do politics in Nigeria. I think he wanted to go into politics also in UK or he is in politics and his followers were abusing people. So they were surprised. That was what the guy said. So let's continue. I want to be sure. I'm grateful to colleagues who have stayed late to uh, be present during this uh, this debate. SPAC Nation, uh, an organisation that's been in the news recently, and I'd like to start off by expressing my gratitude to Nadine White and Emma Yule at Huff Post, who have carried out some extraordinary investigative journalism to bring them to light, and also to Greg McKenzie and the excellent BBC Panorama team for their work, as well as many others uh, working in the media and in the press. When I first became aware of SPAC Nation, I thought, as many have done, that it was just another church. I started to think differently when one of their leaders stood as the Conservative candidate in a Croydon Council by-election. Now, there's nothing wrong in a church leader standing for election, of course. What was odd was to find hundreds of young members of this so-called church shouting abuse at other parties' canvassers, shouting obscenities at the council leader, and intimidating voters on their own doorsteps, including by video recording them. 
when I tweeted my concerns about this unchurchlike behaviour, I was inundated with emails and phone calls from young people and their parents making alarming allegations about SPAC Nation. I took a full two days to phone them all back. But from that, I was able to piece together what was really going on inside this organisation. I am convinced that SPAC Nation is a cult. They advertise events targeted mainly at young black people in poorer parts of London. They offer free food or free bowling sessions to attract young people to come along. The young leaders vet the young people who turn up and they then target those who appear to be the most susceptible. They befriend these particular young people and they invite them to further functions and events, including dinners. One of the organisation's leaders will start phoning them, sometimes several times a day. They're then given lifts by that individual to meeting. Then what appears to be brainwashing starts. They're told that, the, that if their life is unsuccessful, if their family is poor, that's because they're not giving enough money to God. They call it seed. If you give seed to God, as much as you can lay your hands on, you will become rich. This is the message. Sorry, I had to pause there. Did you hear my voice in that, in what he was saying? That is where I said, there was a place I had my voice. The man said, they, they told them that they have to give, it's because they're not giving God money. That is why they are poor. They need to. <laughs> they try to pump into these young people's heads. The organization's leaders display extraordinary wealth. They drive cars worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. They wear Rolex watches and expensive designer suits, and they live in multi-million pound properties. All of this way beyond the experience of the young people that they are targeting. They tell these vulnerable young people that they became rich by giving seed to God and tell them they can have the same, but first they have to give and by any means possible. By any Some means, young people possible. are encouraged to break their links with their families and move into properties rented by the organization's leaders. They call them. He said they have to give, that they got all their own wealth from giving, and those young ones to have to give by any means. It doesn't matter, just go and get the money and bring it by any means possible, just like a. Uh, uh, you know, they will tell you in our own place too. Even if you have to empty your account, you have to give. That is where I said I was hearing my voice. Houses, the term used for drug dens in the United States. A woman leader of this organization running one of these trap houses where vulnerable young girls were placed has 27 convictions for serious fraud. No vulnerable child should be allowed anywhere near her. Once in these houses, the control and coercion becomes far more insidious. One young, vi young victim told me they had prayer sessions that she described as brainwashing for up to eight hours a day. But the emphasis wasn't on God or spirituality. It was on wealth and money and the need to give seed to God in order to get rich. Once the organization has control of a young person's mind, they pressure them into making fraudulent personal loan applications so they can hand the money to the organization's leaders. They're pressured into setting up fake businesses so they can apply fraudulently for business loans. The so-called pastors show the young recruits how to fill in the application forms with false information. In some cases, they fill the forms in for the young person simply to sign. In at least one case, an application was made in a young person's name without their knowledge or awareness that it had been done. Would, was... would the Honourable Member give way? Um, on SPAC Nation and the financial implications of some of their dealings, uh, my Honourable Friend will be aware of the case of the late uh, Mrs. Austin Laru who seems to have obtained a loan for £150,000, a secured loan on her house. She, um, she tragically passed away, leaving her two young adult daughters and 13-year-old son in the house, unaware that there was um, this control of the house, which was later repossessed uh, and a bailiff's warrant secured, only stopped 
uh, because of the presence of the young 13-year-old son. That family risked losing their home and becoming homeless for a loan they didn't know about, and their <laughs> mum has passed away. Um, I have written to the church. They have admitted that they were involved in securing or helping secure that loan. Does that give my uh, friend further concern? I'm, I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for raising... Let's pause again. Shengbo, did you hear that a woman took a loan, used a low house to take loan? The woman died. She will ask, he will ask them to go and collect loan and bring it. Shebi people are saying, they said he doesn't collect tithes. He doesn't collect offering. Is it not even better to collect tithes and offering? You see where his own money is coming from. Did you hear? A whole house. A whole house. It's another alarming case of what appears to be a form of fraud and deception mm. perpetrated upon uh, a family who just lost their mother uh, and seems to have been deliberately intended to disinherit her children. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for her for raising uh, that case too. And that there are many ways in which they appear to be perpetrating fraud in order to enrich themselves, the leaders of this organization. I've spoken to young people who absolutely sickeningly were taken to private clinics to sell their blood with a so-called pastor <laughs> pretending to be their parent to sign consent. Young people I've spoken to were coached to commit benefit fraud. I've met students and spoken to their parents who were coerced into handing over their entire student loans before <laughs> then being taken to banks to raise further money through personal loans. So they lost their ability to continue an education and ended up in serious financial debt. Tragically, where criminal exploitation is taking place, there is often also sexual exploitation. One young woman told me she was just six to 16 when she moved into a trap house. And in her words, everyone was having sex with everyone else. It was disgusting. <laughs> I asked her Hola, clarify, whether she meant older pastors having sex with younger girls. And she wow. said, yes. When this young woman complained to her pastor, she was taken to the organization's lead her, leader, who told her that if she complained to the police, it would rebound on her because he was powerful and had friends in high places. He made that claim look real to these vulnerable young people by inviting politicians and senior police officers to church services. He even met the Prime Minister in 10 Downing Street. All of them, I believe, thought they were engaging with a church that was helping vulnerable young people. But in reality, they were being used to intimidate young victims mm. to stop them from speaking out. This is not an organisation getting young people out of crime, as it claims. It's an organization criminal young, criminalizing young people for its own ends. SPAC Nation is operating right across London and has already expanded into other cities, including Birmingham and Leicester. Can I just thank my number for actually ah. securing this debate and for actually... Edurema Bino, Elei Lagbarao. And they say they just close in. Anyway, it is not Ajuni that is talking now, right? I am not the one coming out to say this is what I had, this is what I had. This is what was being deliberated concerning me. Apart from, they said he would take, the, he has pastors working on dying. He will ask young, they have, he has pastors. They said he has pastors working for him. They will take young people to private clinic to go and sell their blood, collect the money, and bring the money to him. And for people who say there is no big deal when they brought him, anybody that has sense will look at him and see. And see his body language that he was not settled. He know he has big case. Before they can say, 
They've been on this case for the past 10 years, gathering their evidences. 10 years, gathering their evidences. Not only that, rape charges against them. You know, uh, trap house, one. they call it trap house. Anyway, they call somebody, they call some place, a place a trap house. What else do you expect to be happening there? Because I learned some parents even release their children willingly to him. Somewhere is called a trap house. What else are you expecting? A place where grown-up men are with young, young children, girls and boys. Obama wants to have sex with them the way they like. And he was even threatening them. If you go and tell them, I know people in this country. He was so confident of himself, like they do in Nigeria. You know, of course, a poor person. And you have seen that where they pick children from. People have mentioned the place. It's like picking people going to like Ajegule in Nigeria. Agege. Slum of Agege, not all Agege, slum of Agege, going to uh, Ijora, Badia, Ejo, Awoboni. Where are the places that are somehow in Nigeria, especially Lagos that we know? Ijora, Badia, Ajegunle, slum of Agege. Um, where are the places that are still like Mushi? It's like going to those kind of places and picking, of course. Picking children from dysfunctional homes. Marco, thank you. Children from dysfunctional homes. Children whose parents are very, very poor. So it's like going there to pick them and telling them to do something. That if they can do what you are doing, they will be rich too. Exactly. What, that is the picture they are painting for us. And they mention the places. If you read through the comments, if you are just joining us, read through the gov comment section. They have mentioned a lot of places in UK that are like our own Oshodi. Thank you. Bariga, Eshe, all those places, it will go. That is where they are picking their victims from. And of course, if you are living abroad, you will know some children, they don't even sleep at home again. They sleep on the streets. They can rent one room and all of them will be living in that room doing all sorts of orishi rishi. So that is where he's getting them from. And it's, you know, children that are already, children that are already emotionally, psychologically unbalanced, he was able to penetrate them and he was using them. Not only that, even student loan benefits he will tell them to collect and so is a seed. No wonder he can say he does not collect tithes. He does not collect of it. a video. I just can't go. But she a video with me. He make me more. But when he tell me to repay me, he but she. With exception of one person, or the only reason. I tell but she a video with me. He make me more. See, but he show. So he will go to such places. Peckham, Croydon, um, I want to buy me that look like on They mention a lot of uh, places in the uh, UK there. Then that Gingham or something. Can you call? Can you wish you um, Louis Sham? I've been called. Con. They mention a lot of places in UK that are like that. That would see a more South London. What did you do? Con see. Edmonton, Barking, Tottenham, Woolish, thank you. He goes there, he be totally long co one in here. I want more to get pay, want to do Sanle. I want more to see our parents in one, see one by one sort of more. Birmingham, whatever the Louisian book will, Louis, Louis, Louis. He will go there and pick them, pick them, pick them. And of course, he's flaunting witches, I mean, riches. Is flaunting riches be before these children, before these youths, and because we, the ideas themselves, you know, they already have a bad foundation, so it is easy for him to use them. Ayeka Magbo, 
eh, exposure yi lo this one let it care hey me ti e gbodi ben to nu fi gbe mi lo yi won ba ti mo gbo was enough to talk about but let's finish it raising what is clearly quite an important issue mm. but does he agree with me it's criminal activity and it's preying on the most vulnerable and it's essential that the government really does need to intervene and take action on this I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for making that important point. I'm looking forward to hearing what ministers have to say afterwards about how we can work constructively and collectively together to tackle many of the problems uh, and, and, and horrors that we're hearing associated with, the, with this, this organisation. Uh, as I was saying, the organisation started uh, in London. It seems to have spread right across the city, but it's expanding into other cities, including Birmingham and Leicester. They have no fixed location. They don't have a home church, which makes it much harder for... Did you hear? They have no fixed location. They don't have any building, as in this is their own building that our name is on. This is the building we have bought. They don't have. <laughs> oh, Lagbara. Is to track them. There's not a home police uh, command unit which is keeping uh, track of what they're doing. There's not uh, a local safeguarding board which is keeping track uh, of the risks to young people. They hold their services in vast venues in many different boroughs and now different cities across the country. I've reported every single alle allegation that was made to me, to the police and to the safeguarding authorities. But I am deeply worried that more has not been done to stop this organization from exploiting vulnerable young people. SPAT Nation itself claims to have up to a thousand young people involved right now. Every one of those young people is potentially at risk. They appear to have up to 15 trap houses scattered across London. Every young person inside those properties is potentially at very serious risk. A teacher in North London told me that SPAC Nation had been recruiting schoolgirls outside the school gates. A youth worker in Croydon told me they had been recruiting outside the youth centre. They are targeting young people so they can exploit them, and it is imperative that they are stopped. I have some questions that I'd like the Minister mm. to answer this evening, if that's possible. Allegations about this organisation have been circulating widely in the black community and on social media for up to four years. So why has police intelligence failed to pick anything up? I was able to find out most of this information over a couple of days, speaking to people and then Googling on social media. If I can do that without the resources of the police, why has police intelligence failed to recognize what is happening to potentially thousands of vulnerable young kids across this city? What action can be taken immediately to stop this organization recruiting any more vulnerable young people for abuse and exploitation in my constituency and beyond? Given what we have heard, given what victims have told us, we surely cannot allow this organization to continue targeting other young people for abuse and exploitation when it's possible for us to take steps and action to protect them. What help can be given to young people involved in SPAC Nation now, including those living in trap houses who need to get out urgently before they're further criminalized, their family relationships destroyed, and their future lives ruined? And why has no help been offered to potentially thousands of young people who have managed to get away from SPAC Nation but are left burdened with huge debts, criminalized, many of them homeless, and many of them suffering trauma and mental ill health? We cannot simply leave these young people to suffer the consequences of abuse by an exploitative organization. There are, yep. Um, I have to say that um, what he has illustrated tonight in the, in the House is, uh, is worrying to every one of us who has heard it, and, and I think it's, it's hard not to be moved and, and, and feel concerned about it. Um, the magnitude and the massiveness of what is, he has outlined, and what the gentleman has outlined, uh, would indicate to me that it wouldn't just be an ordinary police investigation. It probably needs a certain, a specialised unit, unit, unit set aside with the resources and the and the manpower and woman power to try and make it to have the investigation concluded and to put an end to what's going on. Exploitation of young people is is abysmal and is despicable and needs to be addressed. I'm very grateful, as always, to the honourable gentleman for his, his intervention, and I agree with every word.
uh, every word that he's said. Now, what concerns me further is that there are worrying echoes of the Rotherham child abuse scandal in what's happening here. In that case, vulnerable young girls' allegations of serious abuse were dismissed because they came from poor or difficult backgrounds. Mm. And it's the same with SPAC Nation. I can't help wondering, as one desperate mum told me, if this was happening to white middle-class children, would it have been ignored for so many years? Would it have been allowed to go on in the way for that so it long. has done? Exactly. We need to address that question because it is a Not real bad. feeling and concern in the community. And it's true. In my opinion, SPAC Nation is a criminal enterprise masquerading as a church because that gives them access to vulnerable young people and cover for exploiting them. To every young person who's afraid or at risk from SPAC Nation's activities tonight, I'd like to say this. This organisation might seem powerful, but we are stronger and we are on your side. We will not stop collectively until every young person is safe. We will not stop until the wrongdoers inside SPAC Nation have been brought to justice. We will not stop until this dangerous, manipulative organisation can do mo no more harm. <laughs> Minister. Mm. Thank you. I would like to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for Croydon North for calling this debate and raising these very serious concerns. I would also like to thank his constituents and all those who've had the courage to speak up and bring this situation to his attention and to our attention and to thank mm. other members who've stayed here tonight to yes, they did. contribute to this debate. Yes, he did. You want me to take it back so you can hear again? Somebody here said, did I hear the speaker say that Spark Nation is a criminal organization? Yes, he did. Should we really take it back so that we can hear it again? <laughs> Chef Eggboy again, me. Chef Eggboy again, me. They took their time, and you can hear somebody, one of them said, Shetoba, if it is the child of the whites, would they have allowed this guy to go on for this long? Of course not. They wouldn't. But because there are some of them that really feel concerned, they keep fighting it. They keep fighting it in the parliament until they listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> so people had, so we don't have to repeat it. Somebody just said, criminal masquerading church. Hmm. Spark organization. Exactly. Yes, they did. They said it's a criminal organization covering up as a, as a church. Yes, they did. Somebody said 10 years investigation. Okay. Yes. You know why? They always make sure they have enough evidence to bust somebody. Once they bust somebody, they are busting you for real. They don't just bust halfway so that you will not sue them. And they will look like they are F O O L. You understand? They always make sure they do their diligence from afar. They will be following you. People around you might even be part of the people following you, we you will not know. So they will be doing it gradually, gradually, until they have compiled enough evidences against you. They've been on it for long. This video that we are, this audio we are listening to was two years ago okay so i think this is where they concluded that needed they needed to bust him they needed to start action on him and that was what gave back to what happened last week when they said is um this thing is a uh, church has been shut down it does not even have a permanent church address it doesn't have a building so we we'll can continue so just to Oh, you both know the rush exactly. Oh, you both does not rush for real. Although a lot of man she in jungle jungle, then he have work tighten up, tight tidy up. That's all. So for people who are thinking, um, when you both just wake up one day to talk, uh, uh. So we are trying to tell you. So for some of you did not get hold of the video, we are playing the audio for you. Listen, they do a thorough job before they come, and you can hear if you are just joining us. Watch the video from the beginning. So you will hear what the parliament were saying concerning this guy. How they put children and young people in, in, a, in a trap house. What they do with these young people, both girls and boys. 
sex is involved, they say drug is involved, fraud is involved, selling blood for money is involved, um, collecting benefits and giving it to them is involved, collecting loans and giving it to them is involved. Not only that, they are using them for other activities. So let's continue to hear. And they said it is not a church. And they were surprised that somebody would tell you, bring money so that your life can be better. That you will say, me, somebody like me should shut up. The Oyibo say they cannot comprehend, even though their own people too are part of this brainwash system that we are talking of. Now, I'm answering this debate as a Minister for Arts, Heritage and Tourism on behalf of the Minister for Civil Society, Baroness Barron, who sits in the House of Lords. And the allegations concern a charity and charity policy sits within our department. But I'm also very grateful to have the Minister for Safeguarding and Vulnerability from the Home Office on the front bench with me and the Minister for London and another member for Croydon. I've listened very carefully to the Honourable Member. I've also read a great deal of the coverage in the media and I also watched the Panorama, Panorama documentary and I found the accusations deeply concerning. These are very serious, very serious allegations, and they clearly must be properly and urgently investigated. On the 5th of December last year, the Charity Commission opened a statutory inquiry into SPAC Nation, and that inquiry is looking into its finances, governance, and safeguarding, and its overall compliance with charity law. That is where they want to start that from. Was, however, not the Charity Commission's first engagement. The charity is something that they used to nab him last week. That they said his papers are not clean. That is just a starting point. They need something to take him to court and start bringing other evidences against him. So, for I don't know whether he, 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 he paid anybody or not, but for people who are trying to help him, you know what even pains me is the way he's trying to penetrate Nigerian youth. Nigerian youth that are already messed up already. He wants to go and mess those children finally and finish their life. That is why I'm interested. So this charity thing they are talking about that you just had in this audio, the charity thing was the one they used last week that he said eh, he's not paying tax, I mean, whatever, that he said he's not operating one business again and he's not shut it down properly, that he has not been paying tax, blah, 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 blah. It is just a starting point. It is just something to take him to court before they will present other evidences and bring it and bring witnesses that will look him straight in the eye and testify against him. So he's in for a long thing. Engagement with Back Nation. They launched a regulatory compliance case looking into Back Nation in April 2018 and then issued an action plan to its trustees in June 2019. And the Charity Commission was not satisfied SPAC Nation's response to the action plan. And that's why, together with the further allegations and concerns that have been raised in the media and by the Honourable Member, they launched their statutory inquiry in December. The Commission has also issued an order under Section 84 of the Charities Act 2011, requiring the charity to bank money that it holds as cash. I hope the Honourable Member will understand that whilst the Commission is carrying out its statutory inquiry, I cannot comment on the specific allegations in this case. A report will be published by the Commission once the investigation is complete. Now, whilst the Charity Commission cannot itself investigate criminal offences, it does have the power to refer charities to the police. And in parallel, I understand that the Met Police is already reviewing these allegations into fraud and other offences that relate to SPAC Nation that the Honourable Member has raised, and I believe has raised directly with them. In my opinion, one of the most upsetting aspects of these allegations is alleged exploitation of truly vulnerable young people. And the suggestion that the very people who most need help and support may be being taken advantage of, that's particularly worrying. And say that that is a known risk Hence, a huge amount of work that has been and is being done across government to improve safeguarding practices to make our society safer for young people. Safeguarding and... Yeah, I'm very happy to give way. Thank you, I thank you for giving way.
If you agree that this is a really important issue in terms of the safeguarding of young people, the reality is that this is still happening now to a number of young people, not just in London, but as my involvement friend mentioned, across other cities. Is there not something that the government can do in this now time to actually investigate some of these really serious allegations where a number of young people continue to be exploited? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, as I think I'm trying to make clear that these are allegations which are being investigated by the Charity Commission and being reviewed by the police. And it's not something that government can intervene in at this point. But I think you know, this debate is certainly you know, raising this very much up the agenda and for sure is making sure that there is a great deal of awareness um, of the situation. Um, and I will do my best to address the questions as I, as I proceed. Um, I just want to continue to talk a bit more about though, the, the really important role of safeguarding in charity. I think and it is really, really important because it's act exactly that that should prevent exploitation of young people or when exploitation happens, make sure that there is a rapid and effective response. And I, I want to make it clear you know, how seriously the government takes this, that since 2018 we've invested over a million in the domestic charity safeguarding programme. We've been working with charities, other partners, including the National Crime Agency, to raise awareness of safeguarding, to ensure that charities, whatever their size, they're large and small, know their responsibilities, know how to handle concerns quickly and can easily access mm. the advice. Um, the Charity Commission has also launched a whistleblowing helpline to help people report safeguarding concerns. And I would encourage anybody to do this. Um, if they've witnessed or experienced or concerned about wrongdoings in, in charities, to use that as a means of reporting it. I think allegations do reinforce the importance of this really vital work no more, on on safeguarding, and there will be further announcements on that shortly. Protecting people from harm. Oh, shoot. Sorry. ...must always take precedence over protecting a charity's brand or status. And charities must be clear that they will listen to safeguarding concerns and those concerns must be treated promptly and seriously acted on. The majority of charities take their safeguarding responsibilities extremely seriously. And so I think it's right to make sure that you know, we recognise that and then the action is taken by the Charity Commission and its <laughs> no, local safeguarding authorities and the police. However, many of the Honourable Members' concerns do relate to police matters, um, who, as I've said, I, I understand are reviewing the evidence that they have received. Now, can I suggest, if he hasn't done so already, that he raises these concerns um, about policing with both the Mayor of London and with the Commissioner. All right, we can stop here because the rest is all about planning how to proceed on the case. Somebody here said it's not mad. They always try. No, that was what I said. They always try to avoid being sued back. I've been saying that when even I said it in the Curry Madu's case, that they don't just come except until they have a good concrete evidence against you. Okay, they will have been watching you. Um, you said a case can be revisited no matter how long. Okay, good. And of course, okay, I've seen it now on PBC Panorama Spark Nation. Um, not only that, there is this uh, page on YouTube, Exposer. They are on Twitter too. Follow them. This guy is going nowhere. If, if he escape, oh man, slim, chances are slim. But a lot of people will go they will pay for the sin more than him. Those are the people that are working for him. Recently, a case of 15 years got its judgment. When some police officer tried to conceal evidence, I can go on, but safeguarding to be no fit escape. Ben, you. Kole Boninue, he remained his brother. Yeah, the brother has run to Niger. That one don't run, come out. So when people brought him and I was, they were trying to do image laundry people that you think should make investigation of things make their own research who is this person what is he doing how did he... i even he be to camilla right there i asked he's to be married i was shocked to say that they don't know if he's married or not that it seems he's not married i said why 
He's not married. Children call, they say he doesn't have. He doesn't have children. Ah, he doesn't have wife. He's in his 40s. Something is wrong somewhere. You know, I asked before we come projecting somebody as a good person, especially somebody that is penetrating our youth. Already, the Nigerian system is bad. The children are, the youth are messed up already. And somebody, you are inviting somebody. Emi Omosi Wolori Gugu Gemi Oru is married but does not encourage his members to marry. Ah, uh -uh. are you for real, Adiola? Sensation Pastries, how are you? He doesn't encourage his members to marry, but he is, he is married. Are you sure he's married? Mumbo. I want to come back to get with at least over marry. So, yeah, my name will call her law. The UK do not play with vulnerable youths. Any country that plays with their youths, either vulnerable or not vulnerable, they are looking for trouble. The kind of trouble happening in Nigeria. There is no country that will play with youths and the kind of country will have a, a, a peace of mind. It's impossible. You cannot. They know if they don't um, take care of the youths, it's coming to their doorstep. The wife's name is Lola Adeboyega. Eh, thank you. I get how we are the It only took me daddy for me. Let him start auctioning all his designer's clothes before UK police freezes at properties. Oh, let him, uh, you know his wife. Okay, okay. Oh, they said he has actually been married for eight years. Okay, thanks. Somebody said, let him start auctioning all his designer clothes. You see his account. Already, I'm very sure they are monitoring his account. If it is here in America, I don't know how it works with you in UK, for people in UK. If it is here in America, since there is this problem of tax with you, already your account belongs to the government until they finish investigation on you. That is how they do it here. If you have problem with IRS, ask anybody. Somebody said Toby's wife is not Lola. Lola is the post wife. Here, if you have problem with IRS in this country, your account instantly, you can't take a dime out of it until they clear you. Again, we should be able to see the wife's picture. Okay, I saw a picture with him with a woman. Near red carpet, can't see. So probably he is keeping his family safe somewhere. You understand? So obviously he is keeping his wife. Lola is Dapo's wife. That person that corrected that thing is actually right. Mutirinye. Lola is Dapo's wife, not his own wife. I'm worried. Lola is Dapo's wife. I've seen it. So that person that corrected that notion is right. So in your words, it's here. Eje king wo. Bo ya mari details, it's here. Nyo, ti uri, mo yu kalo. Bo ya kwan ti mention ya wwe, but there is something... I build community on Lori Instagram. I will call I build communities. Communities will long build. He claims he's married, but his ex church members, we are very clear that he's not married. And neither does he have a child. He's related to David Boyega. 
John Boye guy is related to them. Yes, their family. But I want you to disown it. But of you know the popular John Boye guy. I want you to disown it. Uh, honestly, I can't see anything about his marriage here on on his bow on Google. Okay, Motiri, Lucy Adegboyega, spouse, wife, Lucy Adegboyega, Nioruko Yawe, why are they still together? There is a lady in his church that is very close to him and doing the duty of his wife. Are they still together? They may be they are not together. Where she really am a picture of Kanton Beku. Kilo de Bogbo shop with designer Lucy Raton. It was when he started having problem that he changed the church name to Nixon. Is it Nixon family from Spark? From Spark Nation. Bogbo designer Lucy Raton. Kilo de Ewonko. O tu lo ma se won rare kile gbo o tu ki o le download e mo he has two kids okay but i'm not sure they are with him there o le ti gbe won pa mo pe in case anything ba fe sele the picture their picture is not on the net okay somebody said his ex church member explicit report that he is not married. That was what raised concerns around safeguarding and sexual abuse perpetrated in the trap houses. Remember when we were listening to that audio, they actually mentioned that the girls there reported being abused by them. And Toby, they said Toby threatened them that if they should report him, if they should report what is happening in the trap house, that there is nothing that will happen. And Sam, how are you? But what designer Lucy Raton? She mo paroni. He was related. He's related to John Boyega. He yet he disassociate from him. We come aburu ko unje. And I learned they even live together at a point. You know. Um. Honestly, all I see is just one or two picture of the wife. There is no picture about the children. Nothing about his child on social media. Sherry Kweogbo, see how he has protected his children in case this thing gets messy. He has projected way, 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 way ahead. Ahead of people following him. He has projected. I'm looking at all the pictures I'm seeing on Google. I can't see the picture of him and his family together. Miori, I saw only one picture of him and his wife, one or two. You see, I can't see any picture of him standing. His fraud is premeditated. Thank you, Adiola, Adiola. I can't see him with a picture of any of his children on social media. Even on Instagram, he has deleted a lot of Instagram pictures. And when they asked about him deleting it, he said it just there are times you just feel like you want to clear your, your space, not because there is any reason he's afraid that he's not afraid. I can't see any picture. Somebody that does not have anything to hide, somebody that knows that he is not doing wickedness to children, to youth, is supposed to be proudly bringing out your picture. Let people know your children. It is not as if you are in danger, right? Actabai says, okay, why you? We don't want to bring out. It's because of the way Nigerian bloggers are blogging. People that are close to me on my main page, they know, they know the, they see the picture of my children. But because of you, you understand? That's why I'm not putting it on my blogging page. But you... Thank you, Anita. Sherry... 
Anita Labi, you see all these our publishing houses in Nigeria. They are part of our problem. They will see reports instead of reporting it clearly. Look at the case of Ekere Madu. Now, these publishing people know that not many Nigeria press on um, links to read because of their data. Instead of them to mention Ekere Madu's name, they said one, uh, one Nigerian man and the wife. They did not mention the name. I was so upset. I said, why are you hiding the name? The name is supposed to be your, 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 your catching something on your page. Why are you hiding it? Sherry, BBC Yoruba, BBC Yoruba, the day BBC Yoruba brought out Mommy Gio, at your joining me, you take one. only Jeku Jenny one. The day they brought Mommy Gio out to come and do laundry, uh, image laundry for uh, Mommy Gio without doing proper investigation. People are accusing this woman of something. You brought her out to say she was not the one that has been speaking in the videos. Videos that everybody and all of you and they were laughing. Ah, me publishing houses. TVC, um, television station, was reporting a rape case. They could not mention the name of the of the perpetrator of the rape case. Meanwhile, the girl has already mentioned the name in another place, and they were not mentioning. You can see they are part of our problem. What's supposed to be your headline when you are writing something that will catch the interest of people, even without pressing on the link? If not for bloggers. If not for bloggers that wrote it out clearly, most of those publishing houses did not write. Somebody said when Toby was interviewed on marriage, he said marriage is overrated. I want to believe he is divorced. Probably the wife knows what is happening and that one has drawn with her children. Because there is no picture of his marriage or children on social media. On Google, see, we only saw one or two pictures where he stood by... Um, they were by red carpets and another one. That was all the picture I saw about him and the wife. And they are old pictures. Very old pictures. So that shows something is going on. Either the wife has left him. Either the wife has left, left him and went away with her children because of what she knows he is doing. Or he is trying to protect them from embarrassment that will come with what he's doing because what he's doing is a well-planned in fact tebango pablo escobar is divorced his family can be traced exactly his family can be traced all other your god of men if you go to social media you will see their picture you will see their children's picture nothing about his family um, his direct family on social media, on Google, on Wikipedia that you can you are supposed to find nothing. They only said he's married and they mentioned Lucy. So who is that Lucy? Many people might not even know. Where are his, are his children? Nobody knows. This is somebody, a, a reputable, there's something that's supposed to be a reputable broadcaster in Nigeria are selling to Nigerian public. If you are just joining us, you don't understand. Watch this video from the beginning and see the exposure and why it got into serious trouble. We watch the, we actually listen to the beginning narrative of how he has been using vulnerable children, like people in Makoko. For example, assuming so first, just put yourself in their shoes because it is the lack of empathy that makes us think people can just do something and we will still ail them. We will still ail them. I can see people that are still crying for Equivalent Emadu up till now. And I've been asking questions. One guy said, can you allow your own child to go for, for somebody to take your child for kidney transplant? He said, I should not talk about that one. I said, that is, the, that is what me I am fighting for. Everybody is looking at this thing from different angles. Me, I'm looking at it from the angle that, what if this boy is my child? Yes, I don't have money. Agreed. And I can't train my child well. I am trying my best. Will I be happy to leave my child? I say, oh yeah, go. Knowing that I don't have money to feed this child. 
What if this child falls sick? It is a different thing if you volunteer that, okay, I am giving myself, I am donating on my own. And you go to the appropriate place, not for exploitation. So we are talking about exploiting. We are talking about put yourself in the position of all these people. For example, you are in Nigeria. We all know how the Nigerian situation is. And one, one God of men come to pick your child under you because you don't have much and take your child and take your child because of money. Use money to lure your child and say, if you come, come, come and be doing this. Go and take student loan. Or oh, for us that are in abroad, we know how we are struggling here. Yeah. Somebody now call our child, use something to attract, attract them. Big cars, big motto, big clothes, designers, and say, so, yeah, go and start doing this and bring the money so God can bless you to begin. No wonder he says he doesn't collect tithes. He says he doesn't collect tithes, he doesn't collect offering. And this man that was intervening him cannot say, where are you getting your money from then? Where did you get all this money? He said he's doing Bitcoin. He's doing this. Where did he start from? He might be doing Bitcoin now. Where did he get the money for Bitcoin from? What has he been doing? What is his background? How did he grow up? Where did he start from? What job has he been doing? What business has he been doing? How did he rise to stardom? How did he rise to affluence? Questions. We don't ask questions. We just see somebody. We start celebrating them. Olowo la yemo. Go buy the panyo to fill owo. As long as the person is rich, it doesn't even matter. Maybe it's your one of your family they have used, or one of your family that they have been they have scammed. It doesn't matter if that child is 21. There are rules guiding it, and they know. They wanted to do this thing privately. It doesn't matter if the child is 21. They took advantage of that child. anything over it doesn't matter. I'm not looking at that boy's age. My own concern is not the age of that boy. The same thing this guy is doing. Yes, you might say those children are the age of consent. But he's using something to exploit them and push them into crime. Push them into, into debt. Destroying their future. In abroad, you take credit. Your credit is don't finish. He knows all this. And he's pushing those children to it. You think, Shay, you think all this... Uh, you think all these Oyibo people, they are like us, Abi? You think they are like us? Anyway, any one of them that has a case with government, let them go and answer the case. Toby's case is just opening. They have not even started with Toby. They have not started at all. It's just starting. We will go more. On social media, on Instagram, it's trying to prove everything is okay. Everything is not okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. He won't pass through immigration. As it is, what he might put on hold in him for the travel, but she won't. For travel, but she won't. Want to buy passport, say. Want to see, want to see red alert, see, can you all over? All over, me, possibly to law. No, be nine, yeah. Where people, they can go do something, finish, run for months. Thank you, everybody that joined me. Uh -huh. Again, so on a lighter note now. 
it doesn't matter Abi, oh, if you can find any discrepancies it's cause for investigation such as safeguarding here in uk bear you his movement is even monitored i'm sure interpol is on a lot exactly we can't go nowhere <clears throat> uh -huh. now on the lighter notes Teb, any top fan by Jimmy Nikki, you know, the page Jimmy. Let us grow this page together and keep creating this awareness. Okay? Sherry, the more top fan by Jimmy Bani, the more that Facebook will leave me alone. They will understand I am not doing anything bad on my page. I am creating awareness. I am enlightening our people. We wait and see, though. Okay? Tonya Sham, how are you? I think round up. Yeah. He cannot run back to Ibadan. Eh, I was only going. Because if he told law, oh my, told my damn hook, he might now be let off the hook because he is not directly committing the crime. And continue to hear most of our people in here. Got to attract Shala in here. Oh, we call on shaking it directly. But for because of the safeguarding issue, to one bed, oh my effect, because we know dialect. If you talk to my effects, any but foot or no word, then conco. But let me tell my obosh and unfold. Um, I'm following the matter bumper to bumper, and I have somebody following it with me that is really happy that we will have had because I before I will hear and will give me information, just like the and we carry my you know. So, and it's here, and so we pay a carry my do a big little Kere 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 madu. Uru kwa yen go ni konyo le ni. Tate kere madu pe. Eh, it might be. He can't go nowhere. They can. You Nigerians can bring. We are. You know why are we talking like we are not Nigerians? Have you seen see Nigerians doctoring doctoring an age? Imagine showing you both so. Is it the first time? Is it the first time people will go and take birth certificates? change birth certificates and put different dates when children want to enter school some parents do it for their children if their child is under age they go and get another birth certificate money oh well oh 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 so why are people believing that boy tell me real if that is the boy emi o ti bini kwe boy yeni if that actually is the boy, eh, that boy is not up to 21. Boys that also themselves for themselves, when they go outside, they tend to look older. Egba I I have seen a lot of them when I was doing farming. When I used to have be have a farm, they come to the farm a lot. Young boys to come and also they always look older than their age when they go to the streets. Street boy, they make people they hide. They make them look older. They make their face harder. So, and even this case is not about even age. This is a case. It's not about age. It's about exploitation. It's about exploitation. It's about slavery. It's about harvesting organ. Not going through the right means. It's not about age. Let's take the age out of it. Because you okay, let's control the age. Because more people are when you are so age, you know, a lot of people really cried on that age thing. They keep distributing it. They say the boy wants to jack her. To bad you know, uncle. Leave that case. Leave that boy's case for his own. But the kere madu, eh, is not getting out of this. Some even said, eh, it's a um, panikayo day that went to reporting. And did I see them mention panikayo day? They said panikayo day has once called them about the way. He alerted them, not because of a madu. He has alerted them before. Check so I'm not a fan of his. In fact, what he blocked me because I went to tell him truth one day. He blocked me. I'm not a fan of Panikayo Day. Is Panikayo Day lying? He's not lying about this organ uh, market. He went to alert them. He did not even mention Nigeria. He said Nigerians going to places um outside some countries. He did not say it is happening to Nigerians and that Nigerians are the one doing it. Go and read that um, um, news again on the mail. They said 
He mentioned that Nigerians that go outside, Africans that are traveling to places like Libya, uh, Saudi, mentioned all those China, Asian countries that, that they are harvesting their organs. That he wants them to look into it. Either that boy consented or he did not consented. It is against the law. Because if you, I, I read this thing out yesterday. They said the law is in place so that the poor, the less privileged will not be tempted to sell to the rich. They do the law to protect the, the poor. Because they know an ugly person can sell his head. If they say, carry your head, come, I go give your family money. A hungry family. We say, okay, so that my children can have good life. Oh, yeah, cut the head. They know hungry person can do it. So they put that law in place. So this is not about age or no age. In fact, <clears throat> for all they care, it can be 40 years old. It can be 50 years old. As long as it is not, as long as it is a poor person. <coughs> As long as it is a poor person, as long as it is not done through the normal process, it is against the law. So, for some of you young, young boys, I was seeing your comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, beto bi yukuro. Oko lo wabi joko si. Eh, eh, tobi kuro lo di screen for me. So, I, I was seeing some young, young people saying, I am ready to sell my own. I tell one boy, I say, where your mama? Call me your mama. Make I tag her to this post. Make she take tie and rope. Tie you and tie her together before you go and do it. I was seeing young Nigerians saying that they are ready to donate. Before you donate. And that will take me to my next show that I will do tomorrow if I have the time. Before you donate, go and read about it. Before you donate, check. Do you have the means to take care of yourself medically later in, in future? Because you're going to live on one kidney. And they say there's nothing bad in living on one kidney. But once that's your one kidney, has problem. That is it. If you have two kidneys, one is having a problem. Yeah, you can still have a hope of living. So donate is not bad. But they say to donate, it has to pass through a due process which is it is first come first serve basis you can't say because it's my family i want to give say they have to do it now now they say they don't do it like that they don't do it like that they catch you they will throw into jail because you have gone against world health organization law on on organ donation so it is a crime it is a crime. I said it yesterday. I'm repeating it. It is a crime. Don't mind them. Oh, go, go, go and read about it. Go and read about the function of the kidney in the body. The importance of the kidney in your body. Go and read about it. There is nothing bad in giving. In fact, here, when you want to go and take your driving license, they will ask you, Will you like to donate your kidney? Uh, will you like to donate your organ in case? Maybe, for example, there is an accident and they see that your enemy is going. Before you may finish, then go collect the organ while it's still okay. Once they know you are going, they will collect the organ from you because they know you are going. Because you have signed the consent on ground that they can take it. So once anything is happening to you and they know you are about to come eh? Not anything will me you. I want to offer donate in the mobile. Those I'm talking to people who want to donate, not you that you are looking at me, that you want to pay me. So they will, they will, they don't have to wait for you since you have given your consent the day you went to take your driving license. And it is allowed so far that it matches. And if it is your <clears throat> relative that wants to donate, according to their law, they will not just give it to you because it is your relative. They will take it and keep it and use it for somebody else. They say it is turn by turn. In the order of order of importance, 
you won't say because it's your relative. That is why uh, Kore Madu arranged a private surgery because he has the money. What he wanted to do was a private surgery. If he goes to the hospital the way they are supposed to go to, with NHS involved, they will not give it to the person, to that girl, because that girl is not, probably she's not on their priority list. They give to priority, priority, they follow. You know what priority is now? First come, first serve. No, not even first come, first serve. First needed, the most important. That is the one they will give first. The one that is more at risk. That is what they do. So it is not about you saying, I want to give. You can give. They will collect it and keep it somewhere. So here in US, like I was explaining, they go ask you, say, as you do, you won't collect your driving license now. Here you go give your, any part of your organ in case there is need for. Once you say yes, and they tell you to sign, they can take your organ anytime. Once they know you are about to claim it, they will remove everything and give it to somebody else. That is how it works here. Yeah. And some people can volunteer on their own, go and say, I want to donate to save a life. Okay? Some can do that. Some, I have seen one of my clients signed. You know, they say she has a very good eye, eyes. That her eyes, with her, despite her age, her eyes are still good. And she signed. She said once she's about to go, they should take her eyes and give it to somebody else. Don't know be bad with that. Let's go and donate. So, uh, in our own tongue, English, you want to move so you have to feel a year. What means she express, 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 say, you know, when you want to donate, you don't want to say, let us press. I'm not doing that. I don't talk Nigeria English, simple Nigeria English, where you and I go understand where we. I talk now. So, irrespective of whether you get money or you don't get money, it's government that regulates organ donor, organ donor. Emma Gengira Mije. Shebo Molari to Murada to make up, yeah? Yes, oh, well, Lori dialysis, obviously. We're looking into Arito Pachi Molara. Oh, love dialysis, yes. People live on dialysis for years. For years. And they live normal life. They still go out. They still do what they need to do. Only they have to be careful. So what are we saying? But to arrange private organ donation or to donate privately if the law catches up with you. So, Eban, share a video. My page is for enlightenment. My page is for education. Educating some of our people that are not ready to read i'm helping them to read and giving them the information so do we facebook leave my page release my page for me <laughs> so we're going to call no it's not nigeria it's zimbabwe it's not in court it toes turn on but i don't want to believe that thing but they said it's true. Cut your toes. Mori, my question is: She go go and want see want her toes in here. Want her to come dozing me when we want. She can come around and let she. I don't get it. Any other curious guy? Any chance you come out curious guy? Or they just want to be very rich? They want to bam bam. They want to chill with the big boys. Right, one can your mark here, your jar. One can your mark be consigned show glass it in concon, a man shabby puff puff and concon. One can come and shake on tap. One can your mamma muru atta, or a package, a cobras in two tap. Tan one your alata ban tati one in the land baby, you package your own in nylon and zip it and put tag. Buy good fridge, be stocking it and be reselling corporately. One can your machine. Ye. Awe yo won ni kon ni. Our people want fast money. 
Our people want to be rich. That is the problem. God, the Zimbabwe government is looking into it. It will depend on in companies in Zimbabwe. Especially my top fans, my regular fans. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this show today. Thank you for what we have been able. This is really, really enlightening this morning that we have done. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know yourselves that you've been sending me uh, more updates to talk on, and at least to buttress whatever we are saying so that people will know we are not just talking. I really appreciate your effort and I say a very big thank you to you. I acknowledge you, even though I'm not going to mention your name, you know yourself, yourselves, one or two, three, you know yourself. So I say a very big thank you to you. And uh, why is it that Zekere Madu didn't take his daughter to one of the miracle pastors in the... Ah! Let somebody say hallelujah! Daddy, there is this daughter of mine that has kidney problem, and I bring it out to you for miracle. Be healed, Rabba Sekere, baby. I don't want to go that route today. I won't go on time. Ever can go that route. Let somebody shout hallelujah. That's a very big question. We have a God of men in Nigeria. I will not mention that P. Hey, welcome, welcome us scatter table for us this morning. He said, why? They no carry the picking go. All these God of men to do their miracle is so do. And say, let somebody shout hallelujah. There is nothing, no sickness, Jesus cannot eat. I am 19 I By the 19, Jesus, please. That you, nobody two hours, my man. By the... You can't come look for my trouble. You don't pinch me. You don't pinch me this afternoon with this thing where you can't talk here. By the Holy Ghost. This is the days of the last time. God is moving in his power again. By the nineteen, Jesus breaks the you. He's not by power. He's not by. He's not the might. He's not my might. I know it breaks the you. He is every sickness. By the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every sickness, every every sickness, every poverty, every sin of sickness, every sin of poverty. Oh, yeah, release. I say release. Receive. Be healed. Hey. There was this video of Paul Lord me to your castle. Time no permits me. Time no permits me at all. They're supposed to carry that picking. Go meet. Uh, let me mention. Who missed you, DSC? Please, warm it up. Let me mention the God of men. They are supposed to take that picking too. There is one God of men. I don't go mention name. That he go around. I want to enjoy Kudi Day. Eh. Daddy or Shusha and Geshe, may record and daddy now. Ati, daddy, eh, going deeper. All those three God of men, their forces, by the time they pull it together, ah, uh -uh. you have job interview, receive your miracle. You you don't even turn it to read anything, just go. Eh, Shengeshe. I see, uh, I don't go mention name. Somebody mention name now. What God cannot do does not exist. So I will not mention name. But I mention, you know, that they go around. After that, they go around. Let's add a uh, Baba Sunsengese. After Sunsengese, we had Papa go and digging deeper. After Papa get digging deeper, what God cannot do does not exist. Those four pipes uh, God of men, me, me need to copy me. A Johnny Jimmy, he will do well if you pay Jimmy. Let that God, those four God of men. By this time, they carry their forces together. The kind turn there, we go come out that bad kidney. Am I being no one share yeah, No vex. And it's not as if I'm insensitive. But when I have seen the rich that has exploited the poor, you don't expect me to have sympathy of them because they are one of the reasons why we say everyone come from Nigeria. So why I won't get sympathy? And I get sympathy and I get empathy. And I'm sorry and I pray that um, they will 
that child will be okay. We pray that child will be okay. Uh, at least that child is in a place where they don't pray. They do you need food. So we are we are sure, even without the father, and even when they throw the papa and mama inside jail, that picking will be, they will still continue treating that child. Forget them. That is the country where it gets sense. Now they give us this, you know, but they do it the right way. They will not do miracle. They will not go to um, um, prayer mountain. They don't even have my mountain. They don't have any prayer mountain. All they have is good hospital, good road, good lights. Where how many days ago was it? Not today, two or three days ago, we had storm here. They took our lights for how many minutes? Did they take that light? Close to an hour. Close to an hour or so. Now, so we they come, we no panic. We know they are bringing it. They keep blinking until the storm come and they gave us the light. If na na enjoy that kind of storm happen, in fact, one month no light. So that kind of place then they work. So this our Baba go around. He don't wake him and bam body. Body where they embalm. Body where they don't put chemical. We don't dry. Like a jacote and a japanla inside freeze. Then do. Baba go around wake that kind of dead. Not only that one, he wake the dead of eh, Baba Osun Sengese. You know Baba Osun Sengese and Baba Lab coat. If you don't know Baba Lab coat, I am a winner. I am a winner. Now you know. Eh -eh. Baba Lab coat. If you know Baba Lab coat self saying wake somebody, where they bam. How many months be that Baba? Eh? Lab coat on. He's saying, wake somebody where they embalm. After that one, he even tell us as he take away the person, say thunder from heaven fall down. After that one, Baba Kumuyi, ah ah, Baba Kumuyi self too. Ah, money me only there to Baba digging deeper. Baba digging deeper. After we carry Baba digging deeper, then plenty where we go carry you. Baba digging the person, saying wake somebody, wake get, wake them, bam. That is the three third one. We can't get another one. Morafoka ministry. You know that one. Where fire, fire. Mm. That fire, fire one. Where they are. Uh -uh. Those one, where they can, uh, they can pray. We're supposed to have that one join. After we had that one join, which other one we go still have join? Oh, you can your corner one. Then plenty. What we supposed to hard make them do? Eh, hey, joint prayer. Is it joint prayer? Anointing. Carry the anointing. All the anointing. Me then join all the anointing together. The kind, the kind storm. The kind anointing will go fall down. <laughs> Even as I they talk, I don't go feel talk if the anointing come down. Now, those kind of people they're supposed to go meet. You know, say you get one video where I'm supposed to talk about and they forget. This guy, eh, hey, thank you. Sule Maito. Not only Sule Maito. Eh, even Jerry Coco, Jerry Malaya. Jerry Coco, Jerry Malaya. That one will come fight me. We can we make my page get trouble. Eh, that one will get key. That one will get key. Baba Yama Tanga. I did try to remember that one since. Baba Yama Tanga too. After Baba Yama Tanga, we go carry Baba Yama Tanga, son-in-law, Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence. I don't mention him now. Lawrence, I call. We go carry Lawrence because he said, don't they do miracle? They don't they go Ghana. They go everywhere. They do in home miracle too. So all of those people are enough. We go carry all of them together. You know, say they tell us. And that is Mr. Key. And uh, that is Mr. Key, uh, Wendy. That is Mr. Key. All of these people, by the time they join their forces together. Thank you, Omowumi. Remember our uh, Baba Bago, Daddy go around, get uh, Moses Road. That magic one, where you take hold up. Say that's magic one. Just focus on me. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Just focus on this, on this thing. And whatever you want, you shall receive. Even if you don't, they die, you go wake up. Even your grandmama, where they don't bury, where they don't bury over 50 years, go wake up. 
once you look at that magic wand i know even they remember to bring my wagi can you know but because i know do their show i will bring that magic wand take show you say this magic wand just focus just focus alagbari loga mugu mugu ora wa mu o wo fo wo mugu jaro so o yawu o o e je ma lo yawu daddy oni ko mu be ni yawu se awon kan wa ye wa sise awon kan wa ye wa gbowo awon kan wa ye wa jiya awon kan wa ye wa seru awon kan wa ye wa nawo awon kan wa ye wa seru yawu feel my stick and slow motion Feel the heat, feel the sunglasses. Obviously, not in Nigeria. Not in Nigeria. Lima Alpha. Eje Kamalo. So that people on uh, YouTube can take time to watch the video. So it will not be too long. As it low two hours. More than it low two hours. It again low two good hours. I had to go. Laba, what motto you call me? Let me go. Kenny, wonderful weekend. If I can come tomorrow. We go come. Eh hey, hey. Baboni Clutches. Mr. Clutches. Yeah, we need to do the show of Mr. Clutches too. Mr. Clutches too can help us to do the miracle. And we need to do the He wrote it by you. I bet that she didn't want that. See the anyans for outside. When I need, if to say this man go me there, only God know whether they don't chop this man too well. well. Like they chop uh, Dora Akunyili money before she died. They actually mentioned Dolly Akunyili's son. Actually mentioned Baba go around. Say Baba go around, chop their money well, well, before she die. They say they chop their money well, well. He said the mama they give her correct money, <laughs> correct money in millions before he die. Say the papa say get anointing, we go heal him. Papa we never heal him. Say we never heal him. Piki. Can you nice day, Jerry? Ever again, Soroji. Eh, can you wonderful weekend? We fair, we fair chocolate. Give my love, be sharing. Love ya and thank you. Don't forget to collect your top fan badge and please help me to the share. The sharing is caring, the sharing would not make my effort to be wasted. Uh, and not only that, you are saving somebody. We are the time you do this. You know, when we started, many many people that did not agree with us, they are with us now commenting. Many that did not agree with us when we started, now they are agreeing, they are seeing your sense, so we will not stop. The messages I get inbox is encouraging me. Some people say, Auntie, please, come on, give up. Please, thank God God has blessed you. Don't need the money on social media. Even if it's just be doing what you need to do, please. We are begging. I say, don't worry. I still got a message this morning from somebody that you are making impact. Don't worry. Our people go get sense. Can you wonderful weekend? So catch ya most likely tomorrow or some other time, maybe Monday, or let's see. God spare us. Bye-bye. Love you all. Eshe. Josina, how are you? Where have you been? Happy weekend. Are they tell you I be? I bet you won't be telling. 